Hello and welcome to today's video translating William Shakespeare's play The Tempest into modern English. You'll see the original text on screen and I'll give the modern translation. We're on now to the very long scene, Act 1, Scene 2. The island before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero and Miranda. Miranda. My dearest father, if by your magic you have caused this wild storm, bring it to an end. It looks as if the sky might pour down boiling hot tar if the sea weren't rising as high as the sky to put the fire out. Oh, I have suffered along with those I saw suffering. A great ship, which without a doubt carried some good people, all smashed to pieces. Oh, their cries broke my heart. The poor souls died. If I had been a god with any power, I would have sunk the sea inside the earth before it could have devoured the great ship and the cargo of souls within her. Prospero, keep calm. Don't be distressed. Tell your grieving heart no harm was done. Miranda, oh, what a dreadful day. Prospero, no harm done. All I have done has been for your welfare. For you, my dear one. For you, my daughter, who is unaware of who she is, not knowing who I am or where I come from, or that I am more than merely Prospero who lives in a poor shack and your humble father. Miranda, it never crossed my mind that there was anything more to know. Prospero, it's time that I explain things to you. Give me a hand and help me take off my magic cloak. So, lays down his mantle. I'll put you down there, my magic. Dry your eyes, take comfort. The awful sight of the shipwreck which moved you to compassion, I have, with the power of magic, organised so safely that not a single person, not even so much as a single hair, was damaged in the whole ship which you saw sink. Sit down, because now is the time for you to know more. Miranda, you have often started to tell me who I am, but stopped and left me asking unanswered questions, ending up with you telling me, wait, not yet. Prospero, the time has now come. It is time for you to listen right now, so do so and listen carefully. Can you remember a time before we lived in this shack? I don't think you can, because then you were not even three years old. Miranda, I definitely can, sir. Prospero, what do you remember? Another house or a person? Any memory that you have, tell me what it is that you can remember. Miranda, it's a distant memory and more like a dream than reality that I can remember. Didn't I used to have four or five women looking after me? Prospero, you did indeed, and more besides, Miranda. But how can it be that you can remember this? What else can you remember from the dark abyss of the past? If you can remember things about your life before you came here, you may be able to remember how you came here. Miranda, no, I can't remember that. Prospero, twelve years ago, Miranda, twelve years ago, your father was the Duke of Milan and a powerful prince. Miranda, sir, aren't you my father? Prospero, your mother was a virtuous woman, and she said you were my daughter, and your father was Duke of Milan, and you his only heir, and a princess no less. Miranda, heavens above! What evil thing happened to us to cause us to leave there, or is it a blessing that we did? Prospero, both, both, my gal. By evil deeds, as you say, we were forced to leave there, but we were blessed to be helped to come here. Miranda, oh, it breaks my heart to think of how troubling it must be for you to recall things that I can't remember, but please carry on. Prospero, my brother and your uncle, called Antonio, please listen to this, that a brother could be so deceitful. He, whom except for you, I loved more than anyone else in the world and trusted with the management of my state, which at that time of all the governing bodies was the strongest, and Prospero, the number one duke, well known for my dignity and for my education in the liberal arts, which was unparalleled, as I was absorbed in my studies, I entrusted the running of my government to my brother and lost touch with the running of my state as I was distracted and captivated by my occult studies. Your deceitful uncle... Are you listening to me? Miranda, sir, I am listening very carefully. Prospero, once he'd become expert at granting certain requests, denying others, knowing who to promote and who to demote for getting too ambitious, won over the people who were mine or changed them or reinvented them, having the position of head of the government and head over everyone in it, he ensured that everyone danced to his tune, and he became to me like the ivy which clings to a majestic tree and sucked the very life out of me. You're not paying attention to me. Miranda, oh good sir, I am listening. Prospero, please listen carefully. In this way I was neglecting practical matters, dedicating all my time to solitude and improving my mind with study, but by being so secluded I unknowingly, in my untrustworthy brother, 
awoke an evil desire, and my trust in him, like that of a good parent, created in him a nature that was as deeply corrupt as was the deepest limitless trust I had for him, a confidence without limits, he having such a power and wealth not only from my own income, but also from my authority entitled him to take from elsewhere, like someone who believes that his lies are truth, just by speaking them at loud deceived himself into believing his own lies. He believed that he was indeed the Duke and not me, and assumed the appearance of royalty, with all its rights and privileges. So, with his ambition growing, do you hear what I'm saying? Miranda, your story is so powerful, sir, that even a deaf person would be able to hear it. Prospero. In order for him to have no division between the role he was playing and the person he was playing it for, he needed to become the Duke of Milan himself. As for me, the poor man, my study of books was large enough dukedom for me. As for earthly royal duties, Antonio believed that I was incapable of carrying them out. He allied himself, so desperate that he was for influence, with the King of Naples, paying him a sum of money every year, publicly acknowledging him and subjecting his coronet and crown to become subservient in a way that the dukedom of Milan has never been before. Alas, poor Milan, under the shameful control of Naples. Miranda, good heavens above! Prospero, think about his character and his actions, then tell me if this man can be called my brother. Miranda, it would be sinful to think badly of my grandmother. Good women do sometimes give birth to bad sons. Prospero, this is the agreement they made. The King of Naples, being a long-established enemy of mine, listens to my brother's request, which was that he, the King, in exchange for the public acknowledgement and goodness knows how much money paid to him, should get rid of me and mine from the dukedom and give beautiful Milan with all honours to my brother instead at which a treacherous army was enlisted, and one night at midnight destined to carry out this plan, Antonio opened the gates of Milan, and in the dead of night the designated officers quickly escorted away me and my crying daughter. Miranda, how awful, although I can't remember how I cried then, I would cry all over again. It is a story that makes me weep. Prospero, listen a little bit longer, and then I'll explain the current situation in which we find ourselves, which, without this story, wouldn't make sense. <clears throat> Miranda, why did they not just kill us there and then? Good question, young woman. My story does beg that question. My dear, they didn't dare to, because the people of Milan loved me so much, and they didn't want to expose their bloodthirsty intentions, but preferred to disguise their foul plans. In short, they hurried us onto a boat, carried us some miles out to sea, where they'd prepared a rotten carcass of a boat with no rigging, sails or masts. Even the rats were wise enough to abandon it. Then they hoisted us into the boat to cry out for mercy to the sea that roared back at us, to sigh to the winds which with pity sighed back at us but could do nothing to help us. Miranda, oh my goodness, what a burden I must have been to you! Prospero, oh, you were an angel. It was you who kept me going. You smiled with heavenly strength whilst I filled the seas with salty tears. Groaning at my ordeal, you inspired in me the courage to persevere in whatever adversity came our way. Miranda, how did we get to dry land? Prospero, by divine intervention. We had some food and some fresh water which a nobleman from Naples, Gonzalo, who was kind-hearted and had been chosen to carry out the plan of abandoning us at sea, gave us, along with some good clothing, linen and other necessities which had been of great help to us. Also, out of the kindness of his heart, knowing how much I loved my books, he supplied me with books from my own library which I value more than my dukedom. Miranda, I really hope that I may see that man some day. Prospero, I'll stand up now, sit still and listen to the end of our ocean ordeal. We arrived here on this island, and it is here that I, your schoolmaster, have given you a better education than other princesses that have more time for recreational activities, and who have tutors who are less dedicated than me. Miranda, may God thank you for it, and now please, sir, for it is troubling my mind, what was your reason for causing this sea storm? Prospero, you need to know this. By some strange chance and much good luck, my dear lady, my enemies have been shipwrecked on this shore, and by my psychic powers I find that my success depends upon the most favourable star, whose influence, if I fail to follow it now, will cause my fortunes to spiral downwards forevermore. Now no more questions. You are looking sleepy. It's a good tiredness, so give in to it. I know you can't resist it. Miranda sleeps. Come on, servant, come. I am ready now. Come to me, my Ariel. Come to me. Enter Ariel. Ariel. Greetings, great master, worthy sir. Greetings. I am here at your disposal, whether you want me to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, or to ride on the billowing clouds. At your command, Ariel, and all my powers. Prospero, did you, spirit, perform every detail of the storm that I asked you to? 
Ariel, to the last detail, I boarded the king's ship, now forward, now in the midships, the deck, and in every cabin I amazed and terrified everyone with flames. Sometimes I divided and burned in many places at once. On the top mast, the yards and bowsprit, I flamed separately. Then I came together in one flame. Jupiter's lightning coming before the dreadful thunderclaps didn't match up to the spectacle I caused. My fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, even the most mighty Neptune, the god of the sea, seemed to overwhelm and made his mighty waves tremble. Yes, and his three-pronged spear shake. Prospero, my brave spirit... Who could be so strong, so stable, that this turmoil would not affect his mind? Ariel, not a single person was unaffected, and everyone behaved like someone delirious with a fever and pulled some desperate stunts. Everyone except the sailors dived into the wild seas and abandoned the ship which I had set alight. The king's son Ferdinand, with his hair standing on end, looking like reeds, not hair, was the first man to jump, shouting, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Prospero, well done, my spirit. But was this near the shore? Ariel, close to the shore, my master. Prospero, but are they all safe, Ariel? Ariel, not a hair on anyone's head was hurt. There's not even a mark on any of their clothes, but they look fresher than before the storm. And just as you asked me to, I've scattered them about on this island in groups. The king's son I have washed ashore by himself and left him cooling the air with his sighs in a nook on the island where he is sitting with his arms crossed looking desolate. Prospero, regarding the king's ship, the sailors, tell me what you did with them and all the rest of the fleet. Ariel, safely in harbour is the king's ship. She's in the deep cove where once you called me up at midnight to bring some dew from the enchanted beer moths. That's where she's hidden. The sailors are all safely below deck, and from the effects of my magic spell accompanying their natural exhaustion, they're sleeping peacefully. And as for the rest of the fleet, which I scattered, they have all gathered again and are sailing in the Mediterranean, heading sadly home for Naples, believing that they witnessed the king's shipwrecked and the death of this great king himself. Prospero, Ariel, your task has been completed exactly as I ordered, but there's more work to be done. What time of day is it? Ariel, past midday. Prospero, at least two hours past. The time between now and six o'clock must be used most wisely by both of us. Ariel, is there more work to do? Since you're giving me more jobs, let me remind you what you promised me, but haven't yet fulfilled. Prospero, what do you mean? Are you in a bad mood? What can you be asking for? Ariel, my freedom. Prospero, before the allotted time, don't say anything else. Ariel, please remember that I have worked hard for you. I haven't lied to you, haven't made mistakes, served you without grudge or grumbling. You promised to let me off a whole year. Prospero, have you forgotten the torment I freed you from? Ariel, no. Prospero, you have forgotten and you think it's an ordeal to tread the slimy depths of the sea or to run on the sharp north wind or to do business for me in the underworld when the earth is frozen solid. Ariel, no I don't, sir. Prospero, you're lying, you evil thing. Have you forgotten the vile witch, Sycorax, who, through old age and bitterness, grew so stooped that she doubled over? Have you forgotten her? Ariel, no, sir. Prospero, you have. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Ariel, in Algiers, sir. Prospero, oh, was she now? I have to every month remind you of the past because you forget. This damned witch, Sycorax, due to her many misdemeanours and witching crimes too terrible for any human to hear about, from Algiers, you know, was banished. For one reason, they decided not to take her life. Isn't that true? Ariel, yes, sir. Prospero, this blue-eyed hag was brought here pregnant and was left here by the sailors. You, my slave, as you told me yourself, were then her servant, and because you were too delicate a spirit to carry out her foul and disgusting orders, refusing her ambitious demands, she locked you up with the help of her more powerful assistants, and in her most unrelenting rage in a hollow pine tree, and in that space you were uncomfortably imprisoned for twelve years, during this time she died and you were left there, expressing your distress as relentlessly as the blades of a mill wheel strike the water. At that time the island, except for the son that Sycorax gave birth to here, a freckled little boy born of an old hag, was not honoured with the presence of a single human being. Ariel, yes, Caliban, her son. Prospero, dopey thing, that's what I say. He, that Caliban who now serves me, you know better than anyone else how tormented you were when I found you. Your groans made wolves howl and touched the hearts of the angriest bears. It was a torment suitable for the damned which Sycorax wasn't able to undo. It was my magic when I arrived and heard you that opened the pine tree and freed you. Ariel, thank you, master. Prospero, if you complain any more, I'll wrench open an oak tree and lock you up in its knotty insides until you have howled your way through twelve winters. Ariel, I'm sorry, master. I will respond to your commands and do my spiritual duties without argument. 
Prospero, do that, and after two days I will set you free. Ariel, that's my noble master. What do you want me to do? Tell me what. What do you want me to do? Prospero, go and disguise yourself as a nymph of the sea. Be visible to no one except you and me, and invisible to everyone else. Go and take on this external form, and then come back here. Go with great care. Exit Ariel. Wake up, my dear, wake up. You have slept well. Wake up. Miranda, your strange story caused weariness in me. Prospero, shake off your weariness. Come on, we'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never has a kind word to say to us. Miranda, he is a villain, sir. I don't want to go there. Prospero, but as it is, we can't do without him. He makes our fire, fetches our wood, and serves us in ways that benefit us. Hello, slave, Caliban, you low-life you, say something. Caliban, with him. You have enough wood. Prospero, I am telling you to come out. There's other work for you to do. Come on, you tortoise. Re-enter Ariel like a water nymph. What a wonderful arrival, my wise, clever Ariel. Listen carefully, whispers to Ariel. My lord, I shall do it. Exit. Prospero to Caliban. You poisonous slave, fathered by the devil himself with your wicked mother, come out. Enter Caliban. Caliban. May an evil dew like the one my mother used to gather with a crow's feather from the poisonous marshlands fall on both of you. May the hot southwest wind blow on you and cause you to have blisters all over your body. Prospero, for saying that, you can be sure that tonight you'll have cramps, sharp pains in your side that will stop you from breathing. Mischief makers shall be sent throughout the night to work all their nasty deeds on you. You will be pinched all over like a honeycomb has holes, and each pinch will sting more than the sting of the bees which made the holes in the honeycomb. Caliban, I must eat my dinner now. The island is mine, left to me by Sycorax, my mother, but you took it from me. When you first arrived here, you were affectionate to me and were good to me. You used to give me water with berries in it and teach me what to call the bigger light and the smaller light that shine in the sky by day and by night. Back then I loved you and showed you all the good things on the island, the fresh water springs, the salt water springs, the barren places and the fertile ones. I curse myself for doing that. May all the magic spells of Sycorax, toads, beetles and bats come against you. I am the only subject you have in your kingdom, and you were my first king, and you keep me here trapped in this cave and prevent me from going anywhere else on the rest of the island. Prospero, you lying slave who responds better to the whip than to kindness. I treated you, you piece of filth, with human kindness and let you live in my own shack until you try to rape my daughter. Caliban, oh ho, oh ho, I wish that I had done it. You stopped me, otherwise I would have populated the island with Caliban's. Prospero, disgusting slave who can't be taught to be good in any way but is capable of everything evil. I took pity on you, taking great care in teaching you to talk, teaching you each hour one new thing or another. When you were illiterate and did not know how to express what you wanted to say but just gabbled like a brute, I helped you to explain what you meant with words that made your meaning clear. But your inherited vile nature, no matter how much you learned, caused people with good natures to be unable to tolerate being near you. So, you got what you deserved and were kept in this cave which is more suitable for you than a prison. Caliban, you taught me how to speak and all I have gained from it is that I know how to curse. I wish a plague on you for teaching me your language. Prospero, get out of here, you son of an old hag. Fetch us some wood and be quick about it as you have other things I want you to do. Are you shrugging maliciously? If you refuse or do grudgingly the things I command, I will torture you with cramps and make all your bones ache and cause you to scream so loudly that wild animals will tremble when they hear you. Caliban, no, please. Aside, I have to obey. He has such strong magic powers he could overcome my mother's god, Setabos, and enslave him. Prospero, so then, slave, go. Exit Caliban. Re-enter Ariel, invisible, playing and singing, Ferdinand following. Ariel's song. Come on to these yellow sands and then hold hands when you have curtsied and kissed the wild waves into silence. Dance gracefully here and there and sweet sprites the bird and bear. Listen, listen. The watchdogs bark. Bow, wow, bow, wow. Spirits dispersedly echo. Bow, wow. Listen, listen. I hear the sound of a strutting cockerel crying cock a doodle doo. Spirits echo cock a doodle doo. Ferdinand. Where is this music coming from? From the air or from the earth? It stopped now, and it must surely be for the benefit of some god on the island. As I was sitting on the shore, weeping again over my father, the king's shipwreck, this music crept up to me across the seas, easing both the fury of the waves and my grief with its sweet sounds. I followed it here, or I should say the music drew me here, but now it has stopped. No, it has started again. 
Ariel sings, Your father lies a full five fathoms below. His bones have changed into coral. His eyes have changed into pearls. Every part of him that was fading away has become completely changed by the sea into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs ring his death bell every hour. Listen, now I can hear them. Ding dong bell. Spirits echo ding dong bell. Ferdinand, the song is about my drowned father. This is not being sung by human beings, nor is it an earthly sound. I can hear it now coming from above me. Prospero to Miranda. Open your eyes and tell me what you see out there. Miranda, what is it? A spirit? Lord, the way it's looking around. Believe me, sir, it is very manful, but it is a spirit. Prospero, no, young woman, it eats and sleeps and has the same five senses as we have. This charming young man you see before you was in the shipwreck, and if he weren't so affected by grief which spoils one's beauty, you would describe him as good-looking. He has lost his fellow shipmates and is wandering about looking for them. Miranda, I could call him a divine being because nothing in the natural realm that I have ever seen has looked so noble. Prospero, aside, things are proceeding, I see, just as my soul wants it to. Spirit, you fine spirit, I will set you free within two days for obeying my commands. Ferdinand, surely this is the goddess that the music is being played for. Please answer my prayer. Can you tell me if you live on this island? And can you give me some good advice on how I should conduct myself here? My most important question, which I have saved until last, is, Oh, you wonderful creature, are you a young woman or a goddess? Miranda, I am not wonderful, sir, but I am definitely a young woman. Ferdinand, she's speaking my language. Heavens above, I am the most important person who speaks this language. I wish we were where I usually speak it. Prospero, how's that the most important? Who are you if the king of Naples heard you say that? Ferdinand, just a person as I am now who's amazed to hear you speak about the king of Naples. He does hear me and that fact makes me weep because I myself am the king of Naples who, with my own eyes that have never since stopped crying, witnessed the king, my father, shipwrecked. Miranda, oh how dreadful. Ferdinand, yes indeed, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his fine son too. Prospero, aside, the Duke of Milan and his far superior daughter could now overcome you if now was the right time. It's the first time they've met and they've fallen in love. Delightful Ariel, I'll reward you by setting you free. To Ferdinand, may I have a word with you, sir? I'm afraid you've made a mistake. A quick word. Miranda, why is my father speaking disrespectfully? This is only the third man I've ever met in my life and the first that I've ever been attracted to. I hope that my father is sensitive to me and my feelings. Ferdinand, oh, if you are a virgin and you haven't given your heart to another man, then I will make you the Queen of Naples. Prospero, just a moment, sir, a quick word. Aside. They have fallen under each other's spell and are in love, but it's happened so quickly that I must cause a little disturbance, otherwise if they win each other's love too easily, they may not value each other highly enough. To Ferdinand, one thing I demand, that you listen to me. You are illegally using a name that doesn't belong to you and have come to this island as a spy to steal it from me, the rightful lord of it. Ferdinand, no, I swear that's not true. Miranda, nothing evil could live in such a beautiful body. If the devil had such a beautiful home, then good things would do all they could to come to live in it. Prospero, to Ferdinand, follow me. To Miranda, don't defend him, he's a traitor. To Ferdinand, come on, I'll chain your neck and feet together, you'll drink seawater, your food will be mussels from the stream, withered roots and empty husks which used to contain acorns. Follow me. Ferdinand, no, I will decline that offer until you, my enemy, have more power than me. Ferdinand draws his sword and is charmed from moving by Prospero. Miranda, oh dear father, don't jump to conclusions about him because he's a good man and he's brave. Prospero, what? I ask you, daughter, do you know more than me? Put your sword away, you traitor, who puts on a good show but wouldn't dare to strike me as your conscience would be overcome with guilt. Change your stance because I can disarm you with this magic wand and make you drop your weapon. Miranda, I'm begging you, father. Prospero, get off. Stop hanging on to my clothing. Miranda, sir, take pity on him. I will guarantee his good character. Prospero, silence. If you say another word, you'll make me reprimand you or even hate you. What are you doing defending an imposter? Be quiet. You think there aren't any other men like him because you've only ever seen him and Caliban. Foolish young woman, most men would consider this man to be another Caliban, and compared to him, they are angels. Miranda, my heart's desire is very humble then. I have no wish to see a more excellent man. Prospero to Ferdinand, come on, obey my orders. Your muscles have become like a child's again and have no strength in them. 
Ferdinand, yes, they have. My courage, as if in a dream, has been restrained. The death of my father, the physical weakness I am experiencing, the shipwreck of all my friends, the threats of this man who has taken me prisoner, would be easy to bear if I could, once a day from my prison, see this young woman. All four corners of the earth could be used for other people's freedom. I would have enough freedom in a prison like that. Prospero, aside, it is working. To Ferdinand, come on. Aside, you've done well, excellent, Ariel. To Ferdinand, follow me. Listen to what you have to do for me next. Miranda, to Ferdinand, do not worry. My father's nature, sir, is really much better than his words make him appear. This is most unusual, the thing he is saying at the moment. Prospero, to Ariel, you shall be as free as the mountain winds, but you must do exactly what I tell you. Ariel, to the last detail. Prospero, to Ferdinand, come on, follow me. To Miranda, do not defend him. Exit.